most important quality you look for in a dog trainer? Tell me in the comments below. Also, click thumbs up for another dog training video. So maybe you've decided you wanna sign up for dog training classes. Maybe you've gotten a new dog or you just want a refresher course, but there's so many dog training classes out there to choose from. How do you know which one is right for you? In this video, I'm going to take a question from someone on Facebook who asked about this, and I'm also gonna give you some general advice on how to choose the best dog training class for you. So this question comes from Facebook from Kelly. She says, hi, I went to my first puppy class today, but I think it has made my puppy very nervous of dogs as there were dogs with muzzles, and he was jumped on by one of the dogs, and for the remainder of the class, he was very reluctant. Normally, he's all for seeing new dogs. Is this what you should expect to see in a puppy class? I think it's a great question, Kelly. Thank you for submitting it. Uh, first, understand it's normal for our dogs to act very differently in a puppy class. Now, not all dogs will, uh, and that can be on either end of the spectrum because sometimes they'll be way out of character. Sometimes they'll be fully in character, if you know what I mean, for those of you that have a very hyper playful dog. Uh, so you have to be very understanding of the environment, especially the first couple of times you take them to class. Think back to the first day of school and how you may have felt. So if your dog is generally pretty mild mannered and then they tend to get nervous in public, be understanding of that. You can work through it, but just be patient with them. On the other end of the spectrum, if you have a dog who's super crazy, they might be extra amped up when coming to class and just act totally crazy. Now I can only speak for myself on this, but I know on the first day of my classes, I actually have people come without their dogs on the very first session so that we can all get on the same page, make sure we have the proper mindset. Uh, and I also take that opportunity to address a lot of unwanted and destructive behaviors that a lot of people with dogs are going through. I'm very strict in my classes about having dogs interact during class or before class until I've had a chance to really evaluate all of them and see how they behave in that setting. Uh, the last thing you wanna do is throw your dog into a new environment with new dogs, with new people, with new smells, with new sounds, and ask them to just be normal and be good. This can throw a lot of dogs off and it can really set them off in some cases. So it's important to keep control of your dog and to not have them go and interact with each other constantly, at least not at first. Now socialization is a big deal and dogs should socialize with each other. So typically after my class, I let people have their dogs interact you know, after class is over. The other thing you said is that there were dogs wearing muzzles in the class. So that, that's a bit of a red flag to me. Again, I don't know the context. I don't know exactly what's going on in the class. Uh, but in general, I know that in my class, I don't allow dogs with severe reactivity issues or severe uh, aggression issues to even come to class because that is not the setting for them. You don't just want to hope for the best and focus on obedience when your dog has this major underlying issue. So I reserve clients like that for private classes where you can really ease them into it and really work with them in a very delicate manner because you have to be very, very dialed in when trying to resolve issues like this. So let me give you some general advice on how to choose the best class for you. Now, largely speaking, there are two main types of group dog training classes. There are classes that are positive reinforcement training, and then there are classes that rely on more traditional approaches, uh, and they will usually require you to use a metal collar, usually a choke chain or a pinch collar, and in some extreme cases, um, we're, we're seeing more businesses gravitate towards these e-collars, which are a politically correct way to say a shock collar. Now, it's my view that all three of these should be avoided at all costs. This is no way to start off your relationship and to start off training with your dog. This doesn't suggest any type of mutual trust. It's a very one-sided point of view when teaching a dog. And the best way to get the best results when teaching a dog is to train with empathy and patience and understanding. To be clear, the only type of training you should use with your dog is positive reinforcement training. Now, beware of the trainer who says he's a positive reinforcement trainer, but yet he still uses the choke chain or the prong collar or the shock collar. The term positive reinforcement has become very popular nowadays, so virtually every trainer out there will say that they are a positive reinforcement trainer. However, a lot of them don't fully get what that means. In other words, they might still correct with a leash and pop on the leash when their dog pulls or stand on the leash to make their dog lie down, 
uh, and then they may occasionally throw a treat at their dog or give them a pat on the head and call that positive reinforcement training. The fastest way to find out if a trainer is for you is ask them what type of collar you should use during class. If they insist that you use a choke chain or a prong collar or a shock collar, uh, don't give them your money, run the other way. These guys have no business really in calling themselves professionals. I obviously have come down very hard on the choke chain trainers and the pinch collar trainers in the past. I've been doing this for years now and I'm a strong believer in that we really need to be very kind and understanding with our dogs, not only because it's the right thing to do, but it will also yield the fastest results and it will uh, produce the most meaningful results. Now, if you're an individual out there who's using these methods, believe me, I understand why you're doing it. This is what these so-called professionals have asked you to do. We see it on TV all the time. Um, so I'm not coming down on you. I'm not here to lecture you. I'm just here to teach you. So I'm not judging you and I don't want you to feel that way at all. It's the professionals who advocate for these methods that I have a beef with. One of the first things that all beginners need to realize and even those of us who may need a refresher from time to time is that dogs do not respond to a frustrated trainer and tools like the ones I mentioned before are really just products of frustration. Uh, we need to be bigger than that. We have human brains, we have the intellect and the ability to communicate with these other very smart life forms. So if we just take a step back take a moment, communicate with them, we can teach dogs things that we never thought possible. So any trainer who's telling you that this should be the default way to go about teaching a dog has really just exhibited uh, their lack of depth. And I, I mean that as respectfully as I can, but you can only teach so much by jerking a dog around on a leash. Uh, the real teaching happens when you teach from the inside outwards. The source of training should not come from a leash and a collar. That source should be from you. Your dog should feel the pride you have in them and your enthusiasm and your happiness during training. They love it when you are enjoying training and they conversely will also enjoy themselves. One of my greatest points of pride as a professional dog trainer is that dog trainers all over the world use my YouTube videos as supplements to their dog training classes. So no greater compliment could be paid. And that means everything to me. I really do appreciate that. And remember, these videos are available to all of you as well. If you want to know how to teach your dog in a positive, loving manner without the use of harsh tools and you want to get faster results than those will yield anyway, make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel. Uh, tell me in the comments below what is the most important quality that you look for in a dog trainer?